Here we go. Another game, another EU, and another EU Fear Fest pool play game. We've got Rawas versus Lorley. This is a the second game from Pool C, uh, Khaled and Drawley's pool. Those are the invited players in the pool. And the non-invited players are the two we're watching right now, Lorley and Rawas, both of them having to qualify. I think they both qualified through the second qualifier. Rawas, through the upper bracket, knocked Dead Monster down to the lowers. And then Lorley was able to finish Dead Monster off by uh, working his way through the lowers and beating Dead Monster to qualify. So Lorley and Rawas, I think both these guys are pretty similarly rated. In fact, I think Lorley might even be higher rated. Rawas has been around a lot longer. I feel like I've seen Lorley's name on the leaderboard. Nice air dribble bump, or really, I don't know if you can really call it an air dribble, but a single touch in the air into a bump. And Lorley taking off the goal line. So. When we've seen Ruas play well in the past, what we saw him doing was dominating the ground game and um, slow plays with possession. When we've seen Lorley win, it's when he doesn't let go of boost. And right now, this is not a bad uh, example of that. A quick play off the wall, able to punish Ruas for coming to challenge early. Nothing Lorley likes to do more than rush it to the net. So if you're going to fall for that trap and try and challenge him right away, he will expose you. Rawas, a humongous kickoff win, but not quite good enough. The ball just a little bit too slow to get in front of the net before his shot attempts. Rawas, not able to steal this midfield boost despite a Knights 50 in the corner. So Lorley's going to have a lot of space. We'll see if Rawas tries to shadow close or fully reset. And ultimately, he's able to challenge that flick fairly easily. Lorley had a lot of space, a lot of opportunity, and he went for a midfield soft lob that was fairly easy to take away. We, we were kind of talking about Rawas in the last series doing that, which always feels like a mistake to me. It seems like I've seen these guys do such quality attacks. You almost expect them to get something good every time, but sometimes maybe they're just losing control of the ball, and they'd rather lob a soft flick than you know completely give up on the play. That being said, Lorley will get a second after a demo and a quick play from the corner. Ruas not going to take a shot on net off of his kickoff win. Instead, an interesting drive in front of the ball and then backwards touch to the wall. But not going to work for a guy who has never let go of the boost button. He is going to get back to the ball so fast and challenge and demo. Lorley, the speedster, hold it to his name. The nice thing about always going supersonic is that you'll always demo somebody if you run into them. Lorley already a few demos in this game number one. Lorley's power shot sent away. Rawas with a lot of space. This is where he's normally very effective. He needs to find this angle. Nice read off the corner. Rawas covering lots of different bounces there. It wasn't a very easy bounce to read. But Rawas able to do it. Rawas kick up when Lorley was thinking about getting that boost and realized just in time that that was a bad idea. They needed to get back to net. But maybe he didn't realize in time as he ultimately ends up giving away the ball. And Rawas is going to tie this game up. 3-3. Three, three. An early lead gets erased as these guys tie it up halfway through the game. Lorley a direct kickoff goal, and that is something that Rawas has been missing. He has had a lot of good kickoffs that have done basically exactly this, off the wall and then in front of the net. But the problem is he doesn't get them as fast as Lorley just did. There was not a chance in the world Rawas was going to be able to get back. So I lied. I, I said they tied it up halfway through the game, but... In the seconds before the halftime really came, Lorley already able to take a one goal lead again. Ross cleared to his backfield. Lorley, an instant regain of the space between them. And then a nice 180 wave dash. He was hard committing to a shadow there. He never even thought about actually challenging Ross as he very, very early on started his 180 to just prep himself for shadowing, but he just doesn't want to be far away from the ball. 
Glass, his dribble flicks have been great, and that won't change now, but Lorley is able to tap it just barely off the top corner, and the speed from Lorley on the recovery in his net will outplay the ball pass for Was. Lorley, it's crazy how much, you know, just extreme speed can get outplays. Normally you see guys who don't want to slow down uh, getting exposed by some top ones players, but basically Lorley is putting Rawas in situations that he's probably not used to. Lorley, another kickoff goal, 6-3. A 3-0 run for Lorley ever since the game was tied. Interesting kickoff. Side flipping into this one to set himself up for a dribble. He's going to put it off the backboard. Can he find the angle? He cannot, but actually putting it high off the backboard might have been better because Rawas likely had the net covered. But Rawas, a high bounce dribble. Lorley, a good shadow, making sure he can cover either angle. Ultimately able to save away that left side post that Rawas picked. Even when Lorley's low on boost, he's coming all the way into Ross's back, Rawas's back corner to get a 50 challenge. And somehow finds a way to not get exposed for it. Nice bump as he had left his net open. The only way he was going to get away with that one was to take Rawas out of the play. 50 seconds. Going to need to see a little bit of magic here from Rawas at the end of the game. Very, very efficient scoring. Needs a goal soon and then likely a couple good kickoffs in his favor. This ball set high on the wall, making sure to steal away the boost from Lorley at midfield. Rawas up in the air, normally likes to wait, but maybe feeling the pressure of the time, and he cannot get the air dribble bump, or I don't know if it's really an air dribble, the single touch bump again. And Lorley will take his open net, likely gonna be a game number one win for Lorley. I'm not sure Lorley's gonna mess up the kickoffs this bad. It's not even really about Rawas getting good kickoffs. It'd be about Lorley terribly, terribly messing them up if he couldn't keep four goals out in 20 seconds. Lorley, a nice little flip reset for the fans. Rawas, a fourth. He'll let us watch another replay. I think Lorley letting off the gas. He had, yeah, as he musties himself forward on defense. But you never know. Sometimes letting uh, an opposition score a goal like that could give them a little bit of uh, confidence. But Lorley will take game number one. Lorley versus Ruas. Game number two. Lorley, the speedster, continues to outpace the opponents. Going up early in the series, he'll Boom, a full field long shot. I mean, I don't think he could really shoot from a farther spot on the field. He's about a car's length ahead of his back wall. And oh my goodness, Rawas! I think Rawas was just trying to casually roll up to this one. I don't think he was worried about that going in because he had some boost. He could have used a flip there to get there if he was actually worried about the shot making it in. But I think he was just trying to roll up to it, you know, nice and slow, make sure he got a good touch that wasn't a panicked touch and ultimately realized too late that he wasn't going to make it. And Lorley is going to go up 1-0. Rawas, a nice long shot, and he took an opportunity on Lorley's aggression. Lorley, you can see, he's thinking about getting that boost, and he turns ball cam back on. He's like, wait, wait a second, wait a second. I don't have time to get boost. The ball's right there. Tried his best to uh, turn at the last second but not going to work. Ruas losing this kickoff back into his own corner. Not a bad loss to kickoff. I really want to see Ruas get going on the ground here. Normally, such a talented player there. But Lorley's backflip challenge, going to take it away and then a tap away on the wall. Ruas has looked really, really good in defense in the past. Right now, it seems like just kind of getting outplayed in almost silly situations. I don't know if he normally plays defense on the wall there, or, or I don't know what it is that he needs to do different, but it seems like Lorley's been able to get, you know, not even that difficult of touches to get it past Rawas. Normally, you know, it takes the world to get it past him. Rawas, a backflip challenge of his own, trying to push the pressure right back on Lorley. 
And a nice chip shot will force Lorley in the air, give himself time to take Lorley's boost. And a Lorley starved on boost, I think, is a Lorley that can be exposed, especially with how quick he likes to play. Ruas will get a second as he goes back and forth across the net. Lorley not able to tap it off the corner. Lorley, the catch and dribble, trying to set up the hook shot, but I think he lost possession. He also wasn't able to steal that corner boost, so a couple misses there. As he certainly did not mean to roll that fast enough that he couldn't shoot, and then definitely didn't mean to miss the corner boost. And Ruas will take advantage. A nice cut infield of his own. This is the Ruas that I'm talking about. The Ruas ground game is lethal. And a nice cut and then a high 45 degree flick to pop it over Lorley. That is what I'm talking about. Lorley, will his direct kickoff goal go? It will. He'll tie it right back up. This was not even necessarily a one kickoff for him. He created this out of a situation that was not in his favor. The ball slightly in his own half had to use his single jump just to pop it into Ruas's half. But I mean, Ruas maybe took ball cam off and had committed to, to getting that side boost. Just didn't realize Lorley was gonna be able to create a shot that quickly. Ruas to set up off the back wall. Ooh, try to get an immediate half flip. Try not half flip, a side flip to take the shot because he knew if he tried to go one, two, that would give time for Lorley to come back, but did not find the angle and power. Lorley, his flip reset. Either he didn't get it or he decided not to use it. And I'm not sure why he wouldn't have used it there. Ruas, what a pinch! He has found a way to play aggressive against a Lorley who does not like to play in the corner, apparently. Ruas pinching it in just inside the far post. Ruas, another kickoff possession. Unlike our North American guys, he does not go wall to air. He cuts it on the ground and forces it to the net. Lorley, just a really poor time set up to uh, approach this ball. I mean, he just wasn't in a good spot, period. He had his car completely faced at the boost. So even if Ruas hadn't gone as fast as he did, there wasn't a lot of things Lorley could save away, except for if Ruas for some reason decided to take it to Lorley's back corner. Lorley in the air, flip resets, a little bit too soft. Ruas able to handle it. And Lorley has just passed a great ball for Ruas. He will take it on the mount dribble, try and expose Lorley, but it is hard to power it past a waiting defender. Oh, that, that's a fortunate bounce. Interesting challenge. I wonder, was Lorley, was this a mistake by Ruas? Did he miss flip? No, yeah, he was just stuck in a tough spot. Trying to shadow close, and all he could really do was tap it with his butt. Ruas trying to outspeed the speedster, and he succeeded, and he'll get a sixth. A nice kickoff win, undercutting Lorley on his path back to the ball. He needed to worry about touching it out of danger. And Ruas uses that slight moment to scoop underneath and get past him. 6-4. Two minutes left to go. Ruas finding himself a little bit here as he goes up 7-4. I think this is definitely the biggest lead for Ruas. He has had a tough time getting going, but found his stride. Lots of time left on the clock, though. Ruas, a high lob off the backboard. Lorley clearing it away. Ruas, an opportunity to play in the air. Will he take it? He does. Only after he sees Lorley drop. Very impressive mechanics from Ruas in the air to use the flip to uh, initiate the dribble and then the flip reset to finish the shot. Very impressive. Goes to show that Ruas just knows the ground game more reliable. He could definitely play a lot more air dribbles if he really wanted to. Ruas takeaway. Being aggressive has seemed to be the answer against Lorley. Apparently, playing a passive one style is uh, playing right into his hands, but if you 
keep the pressure on. It is possible to outpace him, punish him for his slight mistakes. Lorley. This air dribble covered well by Rawas. Lorley felt like there was nothing he could do. Tried to 50 it, but ultimately Rawas was there for that as well. Ross will take to the skies now with an 8-4 lead. Not afraid to try and initiate some dribbles, but not the best of setups this time. Lorley clear to the corner. Taken out of the game. Rawas, a possession play. No reason to bring it over to Lorley's half. He could completely kill it right here. Doesn't seem like Lorley has any interest in closing the distance. So Ross will play a little ping pong with himself back and forth across the walls. Lorley trying to force the issue. He needs to score and he needs to score fast, so it's hard to blame him. But looking like game number two will go to Rawas. Um, he will let Lorley have a free goal, though, with four seconds left to go. I think I saw the guy in chat who is saying you've never seen me before saying my voice doesn't match my face. I, I think that's probably just something that happens to people who, um, who who hear somebody talk a lot and then never see them. Or the other way around, see somebody a lot and then you finally hear them talk. I think that happens a lot with people like that. Ruas versus Lorley. Ramos able to come back in game two. Lorley gonna start the way he started. I feel like a lot of these games with a booming power shot from his own half. Ramos a great double to clear it. Ramos has a boost advantage here in this corner. He has found a lot of success deep in Lorley's corner, which is normally a, a difficult place to get good shot attempts and stay consistent. Uh, you'll hear a lot of 1v1 coaches and stuff preach to never go into the corner of your opposition because it is almost always you know, gonna come out not in your favor, but Rawas has found loads of success coming into Lorley's corner and challenging him. Rawas stuck on the back wall. Lorley, a nice power shot. He did not have a lot of boost, I thought, but he places that so, so well. A good job of forcing Rawas high, trying to demo him. I guess he had just enough. He didn't need much. My goodness, what a shot. That was perfect. Lorley up 1-0. Rawas, his air dribble attempt taken away. Lorley just clearing it down the field. He doesn't have a lot of boost. But we know he doesn't like to slow down. He'll go back to his corner. Roas, he does not take those air dribbles. He always cuts them down in field instead. Going for the low 50. Orly, a good coverage of it. Trying to clear out a lot of space. Gets the demo. I don't think he'll be able to get back around this in time, though. Drawley should be able to spawn. Oh, sorry, Drawley. Roas. Drawley was playing earlier. Lorley up 2 0, though. Nice backflip setup. He didn't shoot that way. Did he shoot this? Wait, he shot it backwards. What was I thinking? That was a half flip shot. My goodness, Lorley. I was like, did he just set it up backwards and then shoot? No, no. That was a full on half flip shot. Placed perfectly. For Lost, not able to get the save. Lorley. Getting his dribble started just a little bit too slow, but he's done a lot with the bump game. I don't mind Rawash challenging, challenging these early. He has uh, proven to get a lot done with cutting Lorley off right away and forcing the issue. But this time, forgetting that Lorley can bump him as he sets up for his continuation play. Rawash has been playing a lot of these um, like corner shots. Lorley's going to get a full counterattack, but it hasn't really been working at the start of this game. But you know when you're like, basically the, the best way I can describe it is when you're playing Rocket League early on 
and every single pass is a like a direct shot at the corner so that it comes out to midfield. Rawas is doing that, which is something you don't even really see anybody do in ones. Um, not at any rank, but also not this high. But he, he's just like willingly booming power shots into the corner. And then I, I don't know if he expects to be able to get it past Lorley. I don't know if it was working earlier. I, I feel like it wasn't. But we saw him cut a couple of like irritable possessions down from the wall, what we normally see as irritable possessions, and then ends by just power shotting it to the corner, which it hasn't worked so far. I, I don't know if it's a miss in execution or if he actually has a plan setting it up from the corner like that. Lorley, a 50 with Rawas. A nice tap above. He always knows Lorley's gonna go quick and he can find an opportunity to get it past him. A second for Rawas. Lots of time left on the clock to make back up the two goals. Rawas looking for a tight angle off the wall. Lorley not even forced to make a save. And this is what I'm talking about in the corner. It's really, really hard to not have this happen to you. I would say this is the only time it's happened to Rawas. He's done a good job of playing in the corner. But this play right here is the play that, you know, all the 1v1 coaches point at and go, look, look, don't challenge in the corner. This is what will happen. The player will just get to carry it all the way to your net. Um, but the thing is, Rawas has scored probably two or three, if not more times by putting pressure in the corner on Lorley. So still up on the corner plays, but 5-2 and Lorley up three with Less and less time left on the clock for Rawas to come back. Rawas not able to pick up that midfield boost. Had to cut back, could not go the extra couple feet. So now he's gonna have to play on zero. And the wave dash setup does get a strong touch. Maybe enough to buy him some boost. Nice 50. Tough situation for Rawas as he is driving to the midfield with absolutely no boost and you know faced completely away from the challenge. The fact that he was able to get such a solid one and keep possession of it is very impressive. Charlie reset on boost. Lowerly, not a lot, but maybe enough to make a play as he fakes that he's gonna let that ball bounce and instead scoops it up with the wave dash. For Ross, a good 50 win. He's looking for that back corner boost. No interest in midfield. He wants to keep Lowerly low. He has been able to punish whenever he can get plays started with a big boost advantage and Lorley knows that too. That's probably why he went to take it away as soon as possible. Ruas, a full field clear. Surprised he didn't bail out for the midfield. I mean, it was obvious that if he tried to clear it to the corner that he was eventually going to get beat by Lorley. But he's making the, the, the ball position play over the possession play. He'd rather have the ball on Lorley's back half than maintain it and keep it at midfield. A nice demo, but without any boost, likely not gonna be able to get this one on net fast enough. And I'm not sure it would matter. But the clock winding down, Lorley. Gonna get another one, 6-2. He'll take gain number three. Put himself on match point. Rawas gonna need to win two in a row to bring it back. Lorley certainly gonna be trying to end it in four. Lorley, flip for the road? Nope. GG's from both these guys. As we head to game number four, Lorley up two to one. Game number four, Lorley versus Ruas. These guys trading back and forth. If the trend continues, Ruas can force game number five, but then Lorley would take it. Ruas, the long shot to start the game. I think Lorley maybe got overly interested in stealing the boost. Or was trying to bump Ross. Ross, very uh, heads up play to not go over the boost, make sure he didn't get demoed. And just connecting on the bounce very well to boom a long shot. Ross, the air dribble, this time not the bump. He's going to go 50, and it's not going to matter either way as he takes it underneath. Lorley thinking about saving high. So hard to make saves off the back wall, but you see players doing it because a lot of the high aerial plays 
are easier to save. Lorelei, late flick. The ball moving just a little bit too fast. You couldn't get a lot of redirection on it. Ravas, a nice wave dash fake, but unfortunately, it did not expose Lorelei at all. I think there was not a lot of angles he could shoot on anyways. That's why Lorelei doesn't really have to worry about it. Even if Ravas had connected well in the wave dash, I think he would have just taken the ball out of a shooting position. Probably why Lorelei not really too um, you know, affected by the setup. Ross missing that back corner boost. What a wave dash to get a little bit extra speed. That was cool. But uh, not quite as cool as having 100 boosts, which he just drove by in the corner. Ooh, Lorelei, an all in play to try and steal it as he set up possession. But it didn't work. Ross on the bounce dribble the other way. Trying to set up some fakes to get Lorelei to miss. He loves that cut left and then 45 degree flick back right. He has scored on Lorley at least a couple times with that, but he's able to save it away this time. Power shot, nice recognition that Lorley was coming to backwards challenge. Rawas had been dribbling it slow, so Lorley was trying to counter that by challenging early, but Rawas was one step ahead and taps it above. 3-1, a direct kickoff goal indeed for Rawas. He doesn't even to touch it, but he will. Who is Lorley? You never heard of him before. He is uh, from Turkey, and he is a top 20 1v1. Just go to the 1v1 leaderboard, and you'll see his name. Lorley, a. Oh, never mind. I was going to say a direct kickoff of his own, but he couldn't quite find the angle, and Rawas also could not find the counterattack with the rolling long shot. He will try and make a possession play, and that's not going to work either. Strong touch from the air. Nice pre jump. Tap this one out a dangerous way. Lorley. Soft flick. Sent away by Rawas. The double will be covered. You can see he tried to sneak it underneath Rawas at the last second, but Lorley's been so good with the bumps and demos after failed offensive attempts. He is always looking to take that uh, defender out of the way. They're frequently in awkward spots. A lot of the times, if you can put a high shot, it'll force you know an awkward save that a defender cannot clear out of very quickly and then it makes him a great target for a demo. And then an immediate kickoff goal and all of a sudden, Lorley right back in this game. Ross dominating it for the beginning. Ross, a kickoff goal of his own. Having to get a little bit of an outplay, not like a direct one. But a great setup, and the air roll shot puts it perfectly behind Lorley. Somebody in chat asking about NA versus EU. The, the, the Fear Fest is not necessarily North America versus EU. Um, it's just an EU region and an NA region. Ravas, able to get a sixth. Anybody who plays on uh, on EU servers can play on the EU side. Ravas, wall to air dribble, flip reset, wave dash. Ravas, he can do it everywhere. 7-3, this is an interesting defense from Lorley. He was thinking about going off the ceiling and then he just lost. Uh, control of his car. You see a lot of players, they'll go up to the ceiling and, and kind of do what Lorley did, just not quite as far, where they'll drive on the ceiling for a second, but turn around and come right back down, um, just kind of kind of as a way to, you know, fake that high challenge. Uh, Lorley just went a little bit too far to the point where his wheels came off the ceiling, and then he was floundering from then on out. 7-3! Ruas! Is he going to take it to the air yet again? He goes for a low dribble, but he gets the flip reset, and uh, Lorley able to 50 it away, and should have an open net where Rawas get back. Oof, that hurts for Lorley. Should have been a goal for him. Drawley's still up four. Oh, sorry, Drawley. My goodness. I think Drawley's chatting or something, so I continue to see his name. 
and then he was playing the last game. Rawas! And then Loralee has a, a Lee name as well. I don't know why I'm mixing that name up so much, but... Rawas up 8-3. A minute 30 left to go. Rawas playing confident now, you can tell. As he jumps up half barrel rolls and uses his jump to push himself back down. Truly just, you know, uh, I'm feeling myself type play if you ask me. Guys who aren't doing as well, aren't as, you know, fancy on their driving around the map. Lorley, he'll get a fourth though, minute left to go. Definitely enough time for him to get four more as he teases this one off of Rawas' car. Ross, can his long shot go in? It cannot, but every second is in favor of him. Interesting setup. I thought maybe he's going to go for the demo, but he actually just corralled around the ball and got almost into a shooting position or close to it and then helped redirect Lorley's clear. He knew Lorley was going to go for a long shot and he felt better about you know redirecting it into the corner instead of trying to 50 it. And one of the positives of that is his car is going the correct way. You know, if he tries to challenge while going to Lorley's back wall, after the 50, he'll be in the wrong spot. But by, you know, scooping around and driving the same way as Lorley, he can redirect the shot, and then also he can continue up for the next play much easier. So interesting bit of uh, defense for Mawas, deep in Lorley's half, and then Mawas just missing, or sorry, Lorley missing a touch in midfield, and Mawas will punish. So game five coming from Lorley versus Mawas. Ruas needing to break the cycle if he wants to take the series. These guys have been trading back and forth, starting with Lorley. So technically, it's Lorley's turn here in game number five. But if Ruas keeps up the momentum he has here, he could certainly take it. 10-4 in favor of Ruas. A couple seconds left to go. I think I saw some people talking about the, the world finals and how we'll do the servers. The only servers I'm worried about is if a US West guy like Lion Blaze has to play a Middle East player. Uh, I think those servers will be the worst. Basically, everything else is um, is doable. It's pretty easy to do, I think. Game five, Rawas versus Lorley. This one going the distance from the two qualifying players. There's one thing that I've noticed about qualifiers in my time is that they have a great way of generating close games. So these guys aren't necessarily playing in the qualifiers as Lorley's air dribble gets tapped away by Roska defense on the back wall. But something about, you know, taking a bunch of people, 32 people about, or like 20, 28-ish people, and then weeding them all out down to two players based on a tournament, it gives you exactly who's playing well at that time. Sometimes if you try and set up a match yourself, with invites, you know, you don't get as close of matchups because maybe the guy was playing good last month, but not as good this month. But qualifiers, man, they always give you close matches. It's always who's playing good right now. And both these guys qualifying to uh, make it here to the pool play and showing that they're both high level players in a close matchup. You'd love to see it. Game number five, starting in favor of Rawas, a good sign for him. Lorley going to the Stocktane. I don't think he was playing Stocktane before. He, he definitely was in an Octane, but not a Stocktane as he booms the shot. Rawas has to save it high, and uh, Lorley able to get back up for the second touch. Yeah, does anybody know? Uh, somebody DM'd me about saying I should get Japanese players playing. Um, and... I mean, I'd definitely be interested. I just have absolutely no connections to the uh, Japanese Rocket League scene at all. This ball bouncing at midfield. Both these guys basically waiting for it to come to the ground to see who's going to take it away. Lorley trying to punish for Wasp for the moment he went to go grab boost, but couldn't shoot fast enough. Space for Lorley. He will take a dribble almost directly down the center of the field. 
I think you want to look for more left to right dribbles to make it harder for defenders to challenge. Rawas able to take away that dribble fairly easily. So both these guys are very talented on the back wall. They're great at you know, saving balls high up to the back wall and then getting that secondary touch to take away possession and end the offender's possession. Nice, Rawas! These are the Rawas signature plays, if you ask me. We see this guy doing this more than anybody else. A nice cut one way and a strong touch back the other way with the air roll shot. I mean, we see players do this, but not as effectively as Rawas. He really knows how to chip it one way, get a defender moving, and then break the ankles and move it back the other way. This is what I'm talking about, these clears. So casual for these dudes. Lorely a high shot, Rawas. Easy touch to kill it onto the back wall and then carry it away. So you know these guys on offense are trying to put on something tough enough that players cannot just get away with stealing the possession that way. Rawas able to steal this back corner boost. Lorley has enough to take a long shot. And it is a heat. A heat? Okay. A, uh, a strong long shot. A heat. Chad, look at that heat. Oh, man. You can see it exploded into fire when it made it to the net. That's how heat it was. <laughs> Big heat. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Laurely down one. <laughs> Ooh, what a save. It didn't seem like it should have been that hard, but Rawas made it razor thin by just barely <laughs> pushing it off the crossbar. Rawas! Wow. Nothing too special. He's just going to cut it online. And Lorley was maybe taking a trip to too many pads. It is a little bit of classic Lorley though, trying to stay at maximum speed and uh, not realizing he was diving in a little bit too deep. Lorley set up off the back wall, Rawas able to handle it. You can see Lorley fake jumping there. He's wanting to waste all of Rawas' boost. Probably didn't have a lot of his own now that I switched him and see that he's so low. But he was hoping to see if he could get Rawas to panic but even though Rawas did jump, able to handle it and eventually take it away. 5-2. Rawas with a three-goal lead. A minute 46 left to go. Finding his stride here just in time after going down 2-1. Rawas can't get the 1-2. Laurel able to break it up. That touch though, a little bit too soft. Actually ended up putting it in a money spot for Rawas. What a save, wait a second. That save, the first touch was not great. He let Rawas right into another great shot, but Lorley, he knew what he was doing all along as he floats right to where Rawas was gonna shoot and gets the second touch. The problem is he needs some offense. These barely saves are not the way he's gonna come back. And in fact, this one is not even barely as he can't get up for it. He didn't get that midfield boost, so he drove out to grab. That That feels like a save. I think that should be a touch away. Lorley using that um, second flip to shoot the ball. You could tell, like, he could have used that second jump to reposition himself, but he had faith that he was already there, and he was going to use it to help accelerate the clear, and oh, no. Lorley getting a little greedy, a little desperate here as he's trying to bring the game back. Rawas... An outplay in his own corner. Not even tough for him. 7-2. Can Lorley find some magic? Needing basically a set of kickoff goals to come back. And this is not a bad way to start. Possession right away. It would have taken him less than 10 seconds had he scored there. But Rawas clearing it away. And Lorley, instead of making a possession play out to midfield, trying to set something up in front of the net, you could see he wants to cut it right back to the net right away. And the result is Rawas being able to take it away. 8-2, I think that could be it, chat. You see a lot of GGs in chat who are trying to call it in favor of Rawas. I think they're not far off. It would be quite the blunder for Rawas to let that many uh, quick goals in. 
So Rawas breaking the cycle as Lorley gets a third. Oh yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's possible. It's possible. If somebody uh, in Rawas' house comes to him and rips his controller out and then rips his keyboard out and runs away, uh, I do think Lorley would be able to come back. And that's technically possible, chat. Lorley shooting it to the far post. Rawas, no reason to speed this dribble. Either Lorley won't challenge and he'll waste time, or Lorley will challenge and he can just pop it above. Flip reset shot for the road. It's wide. Rawas coming back at exactly the right time. Taking it in game number five. Great play from Lorley. Ultimately, though, Rawas will take it. As Rawas goes to 1-1, one one, Lorley to 0-1. Oh As we continue the EU Fear Fest pool play.